to see is a reaction video it is a video of opinion nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos my volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. So I hope you got your coffee or whatever beverage of choice. We're going to get into looking at this particular website, which is titled ForTheOmstead.com. And right away, um, what is this? Let's open this in a new tab and see what this means. Same, same page. All right. Doesn't mean anything. This word, Omstead, I'm very curious about. Sounds very close to homestead. So let's see if that's even historically a word in the fiction system. Here's a breadcrumb. Umstead means hermit, hermit cell. The surname Umstead is derived from the old French word ermite, which means hermit, and the old English word stead, which means place. The name may also be an angelicized form of the German surname, which is derived from... Okay, so there is no plain English historical continuance of the evidence for this word. But I have a feeling it's some sort of connection to homestead. So that's just a guess because they don't give closure to what it means on this website. So as far as the grammar goes, we can look up here, we see a full colon, a space, and then an A, which right off the bat is not correct. And I'm going to explain why it's not correct. All right, look at this sentence right here which is the sentence that was at the top of the web page that I just showed you that we will be going back to shortly. This is not correct for the reason that every correct sentence structure must start with a cause and end with a concern. So it would look something like this. So for the facts of the facts are with the facts by the facts. In correct sentence structure, uh, there's a part of, part of speech called the positional. There are four positionals. For, of, with, and by. Are is the verb in this case. But what we want to focus on are the positionals. For, of, with, and by. For is the cause of the sentence. Of is the concern of the sentence. With is the possessive of the sentence. And by is the authority of the sentence. So when you read it backwards, by becomes for, of becomes with. Just like 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 minus 2 equals 1. The for, of, with, and by perform the function of the plus and the minus sign in that analogy. So 
when you use punctuation, because in correct sentence structure, the full colon would represent position lodial phrases. So to write out for the facts of the facts are with the facts by the facts using full colons instead of the for the of the with the by the, you would write it like this. You see that? You see that the colon has no space there, but here there is a space after the colon. Just like here there is a space after the colon. But here there is no space after the colon. It's tied up against the F in facts. Why? Because if the colon is tied up against the fact and it comes at the beginning of the sentence, it always means for the. And then if it comes at the end of the sentence after the verb, it means by the, because for is congruent with by. A better way to give an example of that would be to write a name. For the Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass. For the Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass. If you put a space between that colon and the Jason hyphen Matthew, it now becomes of the, which is not correct because every sentence must start with a cause for the every sentence every name every title whatever it is it must always start with for the for the mathematical interface to be correct so this would be incorrect it has to be this I hope that's clear. So now, when we look at this title that was at the top of that page, you see why this is not correct. If it were to be correct, the colon would have to be tight up against the A. For the Amstead, comma, space. For a self-governing-community, hyphen of the fellowship and support. Now, on its face, that is a pronoun. And then it throws everything else into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, babble. For, F-O-R, is a pronoun. A is an adverb. Self-governing community is an adjective. Of is a pronoun. The is an adverb. Fellowship is a verb. The ampersand is an and, which is a conjunction, and support is a dangling participle verb. There are particles of negation in these facts, such as SUP, and ING. This is not correct sentence structure. So one way to correct it, as I was showing you earlier, would be this. Also, also, you notice that the Amstead is all capitals, capitalized. Why wouldn't they all cap the other facts as well? Why the inconsistency? So you have a word like support, but you have the particle of negation SUP in there, which means the same thing as sub, which means it's under something. It's not the thing, it's under the thing. So how would you find a positive performance word for that? Well, it's pretty easy. I can think of one off the bat. You can say aid. You can say help. But we'll use aid. So now we have a correct sentence structure here. For the Amstead and self-governed community of the fellowship and aid. That is correct sentence structure. If you want to, for clarity's sake, you can put the ING in brackets there. And if you want to punctuate it, you can do this.
for the Olmstead and self-governed community of the Fellowship Aid. That would be the correct way to do it. These other words, so none of this is correct. None of it. And you see here where it says colon space learn hyphen syntax colon. This colon is what I call a dangling participle colon because a colon represents a position lodial phrase as I just gave you closure in that lesson. Well, there's no fact that follows this colon, so it's just dangling there. That is not correct. You would put a full stop there, just like they did with shop and documents. <clears throat> but for some reason, they didn't. For the lifelong security. Security, the SEC or the SE in security is no contract. That's a particle of negation. Of yourself. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Your lifestyle and your loved ones. Particle of negation with the O in front of the N in ones. And then, of course, the colon mistake. Another dangling participle colon. So this grammar is horrendous. And I would expect no less from someone that learned from colon Russell hyphen J colon Gould, which I'm guessing from this style that that is who this individual learned from. Because I can look at someone's grammar style and tell exactly what the roots of their teaching are. Greetings, venue learners and curious onlookers. Oh my goodness. Onlookers. This is what I'm talking about. I, I got to go back to the other Word document real quick and show you the type of grammar that Russell J. Gould has sanctioned or has authorized and the horrendousness of it. And I am not saying anything personal about Russell J. Gould. I'm talking about his grammar. All right. I'm talking about the grammar of this individual, uh, Paul Douglas Jubinville, who claims to be a teacher. But what they're teaching is not correct. And I'm showing you that it's not correct. Okay. And I'm also showing you how to fix it. So if Paul is watching... You're welcome. I have seen people coming from... I, I've seen Russell J. Gould himself write a sentence like this. How hyphen R colon how hyphen R hyphen U hyphen doing hyphen today comma space seriously and instead of the L Y using an L I. This is a great example of what I'm talking about. This is just a fiction babble sentence with some punctuation in it. It is not correct sentence structure. It is what I call quantum gobbledygook. If you're going to use plain, simple English and try to pass it off as correct sentence structure, why do that? Why confuse the issue? Just write using plain, simple English. Maybe put it in brackets. Just do that. Or do this. Or do this. It's much easier for your reader to read something like that than to read something like this. I mean, folks, it's not that hard. It really is not. I'm telling you, it's not that hard. Now, all right, how would you translate something like this into an actual correct quantum grammar sentence? Let's find out. 
So the sentence must start with a cause. Let, let's go full blast, all right? Full blast. We're going we're gonna to make a complete, all-inclusive, correct sentence structure thought. I'm going to write it out, and then I'm going to reverse engineer it for you. So up here we have, how are you doing today? So in this case, we're going to guess that you means you, the viewer, since I'm the one making the claim, and I may only make claims for myself. I'm speaking to you. How are you doing today? So I'm asking about your condition of state. And it's a query. There are no particles of negation in my facts. They're all positive performance. Up here, we have particle of negation, vowel in front of a consonant in R. We have particle of negation, ING. We have particle of negation, TO, which is future tense. We have a fiction pronoun in here. I mean, it's just all types of wrong stuff going on there. So this is the correct sentence, and the way that you would read it backwards would be, for the claimant and querent of the query conveyance is with the viewer of the location, with the state of the condition, with the query of the claim, with the facts of the claimant's knowledge, with the cognition by the claimant's sensation. So forwards, what is the cause of the... Well, let me graph it here real quick, and so that might be easier for the viewer, especially the beginning viewer to better cognize what it is I'm sharing. <laughs> okay. So the cause of the sentence is the claimant's sensation. That is the source of where this claim is coming from. My sensation, my port of sensation, my five senses, my five plus senses. What is the sensation concerned with? The cognition, my understanding of those sensations. Since we have our cause and concern, now we put our verb of the thinking in, which would be is, which is the only verb in correct sentence structure, and it is singular because claimant sensation is singular. Now we follow with the possessive. The claimant's, what is the cognition, what is possessing the cognition? The claimant's knowledge, my knowledge. And what's the knowledge concerned with? The facts. What's possessing the facts? This claim. What is it a claim of? It's a query. I'm questioning something. It's a query. What's possessing the query? The condition. What's the condition concerned with? The state. What's possessing the state? The location. What's the location concerned with? The viewer. You. What's possessing the viewer? The query conveyance, because I'm asking you, how are you doing? It's a query. And who is the authority of this query conveyance? I am as the claimant and querent. And let me put my name in there. There. So backwards. For the claimant and querent, comma space, Jason Ife and Matthew Colin Glass becomes the cause of the sentence. I'm the source of the claim. So what is the claimant and querent concerned with? Query conveyance. I'm asking a question, a query. I'm making a query claim. Now we have our two position lodial fact phrases, cause and concern. Now we put our verb of the thinking in, which would be, again, singular is. Followed by the possessive. What is the query conveyance being possessed by? The viewer, because I'm asking you, the viewer, a question. What's the viewer concerned with? The location. The viewer is the location as opposed to me. I'm a different location. See what I'm saying? You could even do this. 
put a tilde in front of the viewer if you want to because tilde denotes location. What is possessing the location? The state. What is the state concerned with? The condition. What's the condition being possessed by? The query. I'm asking a question. What is the query concerned with? The claim. Because everything is a claim and this is a query claim. What's possessing the claim? The facts. What's, what are the facts concerned with? The claimant's knowledge, my knowledge. What's possessing the knowledge? My cognition, my understanding. And what is the authority of that cognition? By the claimant's sensation. My port of sensation, the place where data comes in and docks. I am the port authority of that port of sensation. So there you go. That's your grammar lesson for today. I wasn't really planning on doing that, but I'm showing you something, okay? I'm showing you that I know this stuff like the back of my hand, inside and out, forwards and backwards. This individual claims to be a teacher, but yet I've shown you that their grammar is completely horrendous and not correct. So let's look at, uh, oh my goodness. So we have a number system here. We have zero, one, two, three. There is no colon in front of the tilde in the zero. So that automatically throws everything into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, bullshit. The reason being, and again, let's go back to the Word document for the facts, all right? If you would syntax that, that would be five, six, seven. For the facts, five, six, seven. Because fact is a fact, fact is a seven. Two is certification, position lodial, and in fact. Now you have authorization, three elements. Or as I did an analogy in one of my older videos from like 2018. In boxing, the positional, the four would be the jab. Uh, the lodial the would be the hook. And then the facts would be the straight right. Little amusing analogy for you there. So that's how you position a fact. If a fact is a fact on paper, it must be positioned by positional lodial phrases. If I just write that, that is a pronoun. Tilde one is a pronoun because it has not been positioned. It would have to be positioned like this. For the one, or as I showed you earlier, colon tilde one, period. These two things are the same, say the same thing, but I have position them correctly with a position lodial phrase. Otherwise, if one is just standing there by itself, tilde one, maybe it's got a uh, dash after it, that is just a pronoun. That's a pronoun standing by itself because it has not been positioned correctly. What is this? So let's check out the forthephonetics.com. Let's see what that is. Oh my goodness. For the performance harmonization of each node in the closure system. In the closure system. How does that work? If you have four positionals, folks, four of, with, and by, four is congruent with by, of is congruent with with, four is cause, of is concern, with is possessive, by is authority. One word, one meaning, one function, one congruency. How does in figure into that? What's congruent with in? Out. So if you read that backwards, out the closure system. So you're no longer in the system, you're out of it. Makes absolutely no sense. Goodness. Whoa! 
Oh, what did that say? One thousand dollars. Wait, no, one million dollars. You have got to be kidding me. One. <laughs> Folks out there, does anybody know anyone who's ever paid a million dollars for a syntax test? Oh my goodness. Look, for a 60 minute meeting with the teacher, click here. One hour, $100. A 60 minute meeting, $100. For as far as this domain goes and correct sentence structure and teaching and online stuff, that's not an unfair price. That, that is a fair value for a meeting. However, you're not going to be getting correct knowledge. You're not going to be getting correct grammar. That's the only problem. What's the 30 minute, I wonder? What's, is it going to be 50? Oh, yeah, it is 50. Okay, good. Canada Constitution Treaty, Australian Sovereign Flag Treaty, Styles Manual. This ought to be interesting. Uh, ah. their styles manual for correct sentence structure is a fiction styles manual. Wow. This begs belief. This is unreal. Ooh. 12B7 through 12B1. Look at this. None of the numbers have been positioned correctly. Which means this is all adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. For the summary corrections of the document claim list, document claims 12B. For the DCC 12B7 of the joining R with the claims of the venue authority hyphen italics jurisdiction which means it's not on the page with the authorization by the and then they have the dollar store quotations to apostrophes law of the flag document which means there is no fact after by the because it's been taken off the page according to their fiction styles manual. This is 12B7 through 12B1. Check it out, folks. I got something for you right here. For the summary corrections of the civil claim methods are with the 12B by the document contract claims and DCCTC. 12B7 of the DCTC is with the claims of the same authority jurisdiction with the rule of the flag by the contract terms. For the rule of the contract parties is with the terms of the vessel's contract with the label of the pictograph and symbol with the flag of the contract with the terms of contract rules with the completion of the contract with the contract court by this claim. That's 12B7. That's how I wrote it. And let's see how they wrote it. Their 12B7, I'll read it again, says, For the 12B7 of the joining are with the claims of the venue authority with the authorization by the period. This is correct sentence structure, folks. And by the way, this is available for free on my website. Jason-Matthew-Glass dot weebly.com go ahead on over there and you can study this if you'd like to in brief the summary corrections 12b7 through 12b1 are 
joined her with the flag, statement of the claim, service of the methods, methods of the service, position of the venue, authority of the matter, and authorization claim with authority. Um, it's basically how you create a correct sentence structure, document, contract, postal vessel, court venue. So let's get back to this dude's stuff here. Freight way bills. <clears throat> now, besides the fact that this is not correct sentence structure because every sentence starts with a colon space and we have particle negations all over the place, educationally, for those intermediate students, it's good to know these terms. Bills of the lading, freight way bills, transit way bills, switching way bills, straight way bills. But if you're going to use these words in your contracts, I would highly recommend doing your research, doing your study, and come up with your own correct sentence structure, finite means and closures. And don't use these because these are pretty freaking far from correct. And this is coming from an individual who styles themselves as a teacher of syntax. And quite honestly, I have not seen one example of his syntaxing. I've seen examples of his attempts at quantum grammar, which is basically quantum gobbledygook. But I've not seen any example of syntax. Sixty nine lessons, one million dollars for his beginner syntax course, folks. If you want to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, you can contact me at the email address jasonmatthewg17 at gmail .com, which you can find in the bio of this TikTok channel and apply for a workshop, please include your full correct name at the bottom of your email so I know who you are. You know my name. I ask the same consideration to you. The consultation, I'll schedule a 10 to 15 minute video consultation, which costs nothing except for your now space. If you want to learn this stuff and you want to find out more, you can contact me. That's my gift to you. One million dollars to learn shit syntax isn't that not so funny goodness if you'd like to learn correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen i will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me you can ask me whatever you like and i'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to thank you again and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, no, no, no.